Hi guys, Dr. Winnie Yu here from Bespoke Treatments New York City. Today we're going to be talking about how to use a foam roller as a runner. So I wanted to address, if you guys tune into last week's session, we used a massage gun on some of the major muscle groups of the lower body. I'm going to do the same thing with that foam roller today. So you, there's a variety of different foam rollers you can use. Some are rigid, um, some are flatter, some are softer, some are harder. If you're a beginner to this, I would recommend using something that's a little bit softer, preferably not with ridges so that you can understand how to use it first and then not necessarily irritate the tissues if it's too intense. Sometimes the really firm ones, um, especially with the ridges, can be a little bit intense. So start with something lighter and then work your way up. So let's get started. The first exercise that I'm gonna go over is foam rolling for the quadriceps, so the muscles that support the front of the thigh. This one's a little bit challenging for those who have never foam roller before because sometimes it could be pretty intense and tender. So as with anything, work to your tolerance. Never go super, super hard into the tissues because you could potentially compensate somewhere else, maybe tweak your lower back, maybe go too intense, so always stray on the safe side. I'll show you on my left leg. So I'm gonna have you come onto your forearms for your other side, you can use this as a tripod stance. So you could bend that opposite knee, come onto your forearms, and then place this along your quad. So I'll start with my upper quad first. My back toe can be tucked for extra support. For someone that um, does this often, you can definitely lift that back leg up to get a bit deeper into the tissues. But just for the purpose of beginner level, we'll start here. So I'm gonna use both my elbows and my opposite leg on that right side to create a good support. And I'm gonna use my toe back here to be that additional leg. So I'm gonna slowly roll along this area first, and then I'm gonna work my way down. So first I'll spend about 30 to 60 seconds here, and then I'll work my way down a little bit, 30 to 60 seconds here. The biggest common mistake that I sometimes see people do is they go all the way up, all the way down, and they don't really necessarily hit a tissue. Here you end up using a lot more force through your upper body. You don't really necessarily roll anything out too well, so I would recommend spending a bit of time in a smaller section, maybe go side to side to really hit different parts of that tissue before you work your way down. This is a slightly more effective technique and allows you to get deeper into those tissues. So I would have you start here and then work your way down just to above the knee. Second thing I'm gonna go over is the hamstrings. So for foam rolling, I'll have you sit on your bum. You'll have either one leg propped or you can do it on both legs at the same time if you have a longer foam roller. We'll start with one leg first. So propped, two hands behind, lift that foot up and we're gonna pivot with that stance leg and both hands. And we'll just go in small range again, 30 to 60 seconds, and then we'll work our way down. So ideally, yes, you can do this, um, but usually it's not as effective as choosing a singular point and then rolling for a little bit here before you come up and down the tissue. If you're short on time, you can certainly do it this way, but you definitely can benefit more if, for example, you choose a little bit tender point and then spend more time there. Next thing in a similar setup, we're gonna roll it down to that calf complex. So we can start in that lower area by the Achilles, prop that foot up, both hands elevated, uh, excuse me, both hands anchored, and then we'll elevate our bum. And if you could see, my butt is pretty close to the ground. I'm not up here cranking through my lower back at all. I'm keeping it nice and low so that we can adjust the pressure that's being placed on our calf. If you feel like you can go a little bit deeper, you can always lift your butt up higher so you put more pressure onto that calf. So again, 30 to 60 seconds, and then work your way up to the higher parts of that calf. So we've hit the quads, we've hit the hamstrings, we've hit the calves. I'm gonna have you now show the glutes. This one's a little bit more challenging sometimes for some people to get into. So if you can't do this, you can always do some stretches instead for it if you find this challenging. So I'll have you cross one leg over the other. For some people that are not as flexible, you might be here and you might be rounding through your back. If this is the case, I would probably suggest doing some other dynamic stretches instead and then work your way back up to here. So I'm gonna have you cross one leg over the other, rest that ankle onto that opposite thigh. So you're already putting this glute a little bit on stretch and then you're gonna gently turn over to that opposite side where that um, foot is elevated and then slowly work your way up here. For me, that's, a, that's pretty tender. So I'm gonna do smaller rolls over here and then I can gently twist to that other side so I can get a little bit deeper into those inner glute muscles. I can turn a little bit more to hit those outer glute muscles hit that higher point. So again, work your way up. And then if it feels really intense, you can always spend a little bit more time there to your tolerance. For me, this point, I need a little bit more so I can even turn my body a little bit. So I only have two points of contact, so I put more pressure onto the area so I can really get into those tissues. So 
Those were four major body groups that I would recommend for you to use the foam roller on as a runner. It is beneficial to use it before and is beneficial to use it for after. So for muscle recovery, this again, similar to the massage gun, can help with um, tissue extensibility, muscle recovery, bring blood flow to the tissues. And importantly, honestly, if you don't have any recovery tools, this is a great way to just integrate into your warm up or cool down routine, or just at the end of, you know, your cross training day, just so that you can improve your mechanics as a runner. So hope you learned something from today's session. I'll see you guys next week.